There are over 36,000 roadway stream crossings in the state of Massachusetts. Development of roadways have disrupted and fragmented the streams and riverine ecosystems that are the lifeblood and migratory corridors for fish, aquatic organisms, and other wildlife. This video describes effort by MassDEP and others to protect and restore stream and riverine ecosystems in the state. Protection for wetland resources relies on being able to identify problems, document where the problems exist, and use the best available science to develop and implement effective policies and regulations. In 2014, Massachusetts incorporated the Stream Crossing Standards into the Wetlands Protection Act regulations to help restore and protect wetland habitat along river corridors and improve crossing structure design to provide fish and wildlife passage. Massachusetts has promoted the use of stream crossing standards for aquatic organism passage since 2005 through policy, outreach, and training, permitting actions, and more recently by incorporating the stream crossing standards into the Wetland Protection Act regulations. The stream crossing standards now apply directly to restoration projects. The text for the standards that apply to restoration projects can be found in 310 CMR 10.11 to 310 CMR 10.14. They apply to inland and coastal limited projects as described in 310 CMR 10.24 and 310 CMR 10.53 respectively. Bank as described in 310 CMR 10.54 and to land underwater as described in 310 CMR 10.56. Incorporating the stream crossing standards into the wetland regulations ensures that the stream crossing projects are designed to maintain the natural movement of water and sediment through the crossing and to minimize the barriers to fish and wildlife. This is accomplished by using an open bottom span where the bottom of the span is above the elevation of the top of the stream bank. If an open bottom span is not practicable, an embedded structure can be used where the upper surface of the structure is above the elevation of top of bank and where the structure bottom is embedded in substrate that matches the natural stream channel. The width of the structure is at a minimum 1.2 times the bankful width of the stream channel. And new or replacement stream crossings must have an openness ratio that is greater than or equal to 0.82. The openness ratio is the cross-sectional area of the structure opening divided by the length of the crossing, both measured in the same units such as feet or meters, for example. For a box culvert, the openness ratio equals the height times the width divided by the length. For crossing structures with multiple cells or barrels, openness is calculated separately for each cell or barrel. The embedded portion of the culvert is not included in the calculation of the cross-sectional area. A detailed description of how to calculate the openness ratio is provided by the United States Army Corps of Engineers Openness Ratio Spreadsheet. The structure should be designed to maintain continuity of aquatic and benthic elements of the stream that facilitate the movement of fish and other wildlife species along the riparian corridors. These include, for example, appropriate substrates and provisions for dry passage in average and low flow conditions. Hydraulic characteristics such as water depths, turbulence, velocities, and flow patterns through the crossing structure should be comparable to the natural conditions both upstream and downstream. And the stream gradient should be consistent with longitudinal profiles of upstream and downstream reaches. Stream simulation design considerations help to maintain stream stability, protect against erosion and head cutting upstream, and reduce the potential for downstream flooding. Construction of new, non-tidal stream crossings must comply with the stream crossing standards fully. Replacement of or work on existing non-tidal crossings must comply with the stream crossing standards to the maximum extent practicable. 
New tidal crossings must be designed in a manner that provides unrestricted tidal flow over the full natural tidal range. For replacement of or work on existing tidal crossings, the tidal restriction must be eliminated to the maximum extent practicable. To evaluate compliance with the standards to the maximum extent practicable, the applicant must consider the site constraints and assess the in-stream and wetland habitat both up and downstream of the crossing, assess the potential for downstream flooding or the potential for erosion and head cutting, assess the stream stability, the storm flow conveyance, and impacts to wetlands that occur by improving the crossing. For additional details and a complete list of considerations, see 310 CMR 10.24 Section 10 for coastal projects and 310 CMR 1053 Section 8 for inland crossings. MassDEP worked with the North Atlantic Aquatic Connectivity Collaborative, also known as NAACC, on the River and Stream Continuity Project to inventory and hydraulically assess road stream crossing structures for fish and wildlife passage. The extent to which stream crossings present a barrier to the movement of fish and wildlife is of interest to Massachusetts because improving aquatic connectivity at stream crossings contributes to the restoration and protection of wetland habitat and ecosystems under the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. For additional information about this project, go to the NAACC webpage. You can also volunteer to participate in this project or receive training by clicking on the training link outlined here by a red square. MassDEP encourages you to participate in this important project. Stream crossing assessment data for this project is available for viewing and download on the NAACC webpage at the link shown here. Field data from the stream crossing assessments is used to prioritize stream crossings for replacement and identify the best case crossings to improve connectivity of aquatic and terrestrial habitat. Additional information for prioritizing stream crossing improvements is also available at www.streamcontinuity.org. In addition to aquatic organism passage, Crossing structures designed according to stream crossing standards also benefit other public interests protected under the Wetlands Protection Act, such as flood control and storm damage prevention. Impacts to wetland resource areas, increased development, and the stormwater runoff associated with heavy rainfall events have contributed substantial damage to public infrastructure during large flood events. The increased runoff volumes generated by very large storms are exceeding the current culvert design standards and the infrastructure capacity to handle flows. Many elements of our current drainage systems are inadequate to convey the excess runoff. Upgrading existing stream crossing structures with alternative designs that meet stream crossing standards not only improves aquatic organism passage, but also addresses the issue of undersized culverts and significantly improves the capacity of drainage systems to safely convey storm flows. The impacts to the built environment and public service sectors experienced during heavy rainfall events like Tropical Storm Irene have highlighted the need to build resiliency into roadway, railroad, and utility infrastructures. Tropical Storm Irene produced devastating flooding in Massachusetts, Vermont, and locations all along the East Coast. In western Massachusetts, the U.S. Geological Survey found that 8 of 16 long-term stream gauges set new peaks of record on August 28th or 29th in 2011. The preliminary estimate of damages to roads and bridges in Massachusetts alone was calculated by FEMA to be in excess of $25 million. And in a 2012 paper entitled Lessons from Tropical Storm Irene, the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources reported storm-related damage to more than 500 miles of state highway and 200 highway bridges. On municipal roads in Vermont, over 960 culverts and 280 municipal bridges were damaged. Using alternative crossing designs that meet the stream crossing standards can help to build resilience into our infrastructure as we rebuild and repair the damage from these storms.
Shifts in precipitation patterns in recent years are evident in Massachusetts, where rainfall data indicate that the number of daily storms per year with rainfall totals in excess of 1.5 inches per day is increasing over time. This upward trend is illustrated in the graph for Boston. Another important trend in Massachusetts is the increased frequency of larger flood events. This graph of the Neshoba Brook flood discharge records indicates that the historic 25-year flood discharge levels now occur at an 8.5-year recurrence interval. So how effective are the stream crossing standards in addressing flood flows? The United States Geological Survey, in cooperation with MassDEP, studied seven stream crossings in Massachusetts to better understand the performance of alternative stream crossing structures designed to meet the stream crossing standards. They first evaluated the existing stream crossing structures for their ability to convey storm flows for the 5 to 500 year flood events. The simulations showed that water surface elevations for many of the designed flood flows exceeded the capacity of the structure and created flood situations upstream of the site. They also simulated the water surface elevation profiles for the same stream crossings, this time using hypothetical structures designed for fish and wildlife passage, and found that road crossing structures were able to convey most of the flood flows. One example from this study is a stream crossing at Churchill Brook at Hancock Road in Pittsfield, Mass. The top image illustrates the cross section of the upstream face of the existing stream crossing structure, and the bottom graph shows an alternative structure, shaded in gray, designed to meet the stream crossing standards and provide fish and wildlife passage. The top graphs in this image show the simulated water surface elevation profiles for the 5 to 500 year floods at the Churchill Brook existing culvert. The bottom graphs show the water surface elevation profiles for an alternative crossing structure designed using the stream crossing standards. The important thing to notice is that many of the simulated flows exceed the capacity of the existing structure in the top row and create backwater flood conditions upstream of the crossing, while most of the same design flows are conveyed by the alternative stream crossing structure. This suggests that the alternative structure manages many flood flows without exceeding the capacity of the crossing structure and exacerbating upstream flood conditions. The study finds similar outcomes at all seven crossings, suggesting that the design standards represent a viable option for reducing storm-related impacts to road and railway infrastructure. Incorporating regulatory standards for new and replacement stream crossings into the Wetlands Protection Act regulations not only helps improve fish and wildlife passage, but also helps to protect infrastructure by providing better flood management and storm damage prevention in extreme storm events and ensure that the wetland program policies and regulations remain effective under future climate conditions. The Massachusetts Stream Crossing Standard presentation is funded in part by a Federal Clean Water Act Wetland Program Development Grant from the United States Environmental Protection Agency. For additional information regarding stream crossing standards, please contact Alice Smith or Nancy Lynn of the MassDEP Wetlands Program. Our email addresses are alice.smith at state.ma.us or nancy.lynn at state.ma.us. References and links for the Stream Crossing Standards video presentation can be found on the MassDEP website under Education and Outreach. Thank you for joining us.